Hello, Namaste or Adab. Every year, millions of people all over the world become victims of domestic violence. And sadly, it can happen to anyone, women, men, children, between spouses and even friends. No one is immune to domestic violence. Our platform Story Scrapers has taken this initiative to talk in detail about this difficult and crucial topic. And today, we are honored to have with us Additional Director General of Police, Administration Punjab, Gurpreet Kaur Dio Ma'am. Ma'am joined Indian Police Services in 1993. And since then, during her tenure, she has been conferred by many awards and honors. She also has rich international experience, which adds to her dynamism. So let's welcome Gurpreet Dio Ma'am. Hello, ma'am. Very warm welcome to you. Hi, Shweta. Good morning. I'm very glad to be on your platform. Ma'am, it's our honor completely to have you with us to talk about such a sensitive issue. Yeah. So, I would like to you know, share my experience and whatever knowledge I have on the issue for the benefit of the community of women which you have. I'm sure that will really benefit one and all, ma'am. And to start the conversation, ma'am, the basic thing that I and my friends, everybody, the audience wants to know is that what is domestic violence and what is the cycle of violence? So, Shweta, domestic violence, as we uh, know in common parlance, is that, uh, you know, when anybody is in a domestic situation, whether it is a husband, wife or partners, uh, you know, anybody who is living as a partner, is also recognized uh, in a relationship and there are remedies for uh, you know giving some kind of uh, legal justice to such people in case they are in a job so domestic violence is can be physical it can be emotional it can be financial deprivation it can be harassment uh, which is not physical and uh, you know it is kind of convoluted can be sexual violence so there are various kinds of uh, you know uh, uh, situations in which the women may feel uh, you know impacted as far as her mental or physical health health well being is concerned so right. that would be covered in the definition of domestic violence yeah because normally when we talk about domestic violence people just limited it to the physical abuse but it also uh, involves the emotional the mental psychological there are so many other factors also related to it the various dimensions and uh, one must be in the modern world it is good to know that you know what are your rights and you will know your rights only if you know that what is the dimension which yes. is applicable to you Exactly. So even if your wife is being deprived financially, so it may, uh, you know, amount to uh, in this uh, the definition of domestic violence. And the verbal abuse is also covered in all this. Yes, sir, surely. Anything yeah. which affects you psychologically, I mean, that right. is broad definition. Obviously, now husband and uh, you know wives uh, have matrimonial disputes on a daily basis. Yeah, so that would not be uh, covered in that sense, but it is more of uh, that it's a systematic and uh, long term abuse. But that doesn't mean that uh, one uh, such incident, if there is physical or even mental abuse, will not come. But then right. it depends in a legal uh, framework, everything depends on the facts and circumstances of each individual. Yes, exactly, ma'am. That's right. And ma'am, like we are sitting inside these four walls and we don't even come to know what is going on outside in the world. So what are the, uh, you know, the current statistics which are regarding the domestic violence and how many people are getting affected each day and each minute, you know, every minute? So in the domestic violence scenario, if you compare it, you know, a decade back, so the number of cases, the violence against women in general has doubled in the last 10 years. Oh. So because with the increase in population and, uh, you know, increase in the independence, financial uh, independence of women. So more and more women are asserting themselves. 
so right. these factors lead to uh, you know more uh, dispute otherwise in earlier times women used to listen to the husbands or to their partners and uh, you know suffer the abuse but now they because of education empowerment their rights their awareness about their rights so they are now uh, they there is a tendency to assert themselves which leads to more dispute so right. it has so the violence has uh, increased increased then, uh, uh, earlier as you said it was a uh, physical violence was caused uh, you know counted yes, exactly. but now every kind of abuse is counted as a uh, violence so you know statistics are not very reliable indicators yes. but just to give you an example that how many cases we receive in punjab so we have a uh, two helplines which are round the clock helplines if any women is subject to some serious abuse that she needs immediate help so we have a uh, around the clock emergency helpline which is 112 so it right. is yeah, so even if uh, you are uh, having a problem at 2 o'clock in the night somebody is physically harming you and you need immediate police help you can ring up at 112 So on one one two on a daily basis we get about hundred calls. Oh my God! Then we have another, uh, and this is a statewide helpline. Right. And then we have uh, a one eight one, which is a women's helpline. This is also a round the clock helpline. It is a separate, dedicated helpline for women, children, and senior citizens. Yeah. So and, that means every state have their own helpline numbers. Yes. they have and 181 is actually uh, you know government of india nominated helpline so okay. that 181 number is dedicated to women's helpline and in all these states it is functioning as 181 so right. these are differentiated helplines but uh, the difference between these two helplines is that uh, in 112 you get uh, you, you you will uh, go to uh, 112 uh, if you are in an emergency but in a non emergency situation you can uh, take the help of 181 and okay. at, at 181 we have women operators uh, mostly so 90% right. of the staff is women and uh, they are specialized to helpline they will take down on the all the details and uh, then they will uh, you know reach out uh, to the and they will send that complaint to the concerned uh, district So let's say a woman from Tarantaran or Fazilka, Mansa, Pathan Court calls this helpline, which will be received in Mohali, where our center is, and then it will be uh, directed to the women help desk in the concerned district. And there, the women help desk then takes over, and then they deal with it. And we have timelines in which the response will be made. Okay, so that's great. Women in both emergency and non-emergency. Right. So, ma'am, uh, this is in the case of women and uh, children. I've just got a question from uh, audience that if there's any man who needs uh, some kind of assistance, like they complain of domestic violence, so where can they approach? They can also approach approach on the same uh, number or uh, somewhere else. Twenty one one two is meant to be the general purpose helpline for all kinds of emergencies. So right. Attacked or you know need immediate police assistance, they can call it one one two, and one eight one will also listen to them. I mean, but it is a dedicated helpline yeah. for women because right. they said that the women are subject to more abuse, but yeah, then where men are also subject to abuse. So one one two is a general purpose right. helpline right. where everyone can. And Fine, even if they, even if the men uh, ring up at one eight one, their calls will be heard. yeah that's right ma'am and that was really very informative ma'am and uh, as we all know that domestic violence normally happens with, within the four walls that is you know the general statistics that says so when we have these interpersonal relations so are there any warning signs also which one notice and what should be the image uh, you know the step that one should take when they see the warning signs or something like this happening So when you are talking about warning signs, you know, when the cases come to the police station, uh, you know, the warning signs would be some physical sign of abuse. But if I you are talking about uh, you know the 
society and neighbors and family getting to know about violence so any uh, unexpected behavior where the women is keeping silent not responding in her uh, you know normal course of behavior behavior right. so very silent withdrawn or uh, you know then uh, you can one can talk to her and try to find out that what are the reasons and uh, you know uh, our societal system is such that uh, we hesitate to disclose our intimate uh, situations to outsiders and even yes. in so there are cases where uh, women will not disclose uh, you know even inhuman torture to their own parents right so exactly to this platform that uh, we are we are you know helping out the victims concerned so we have to respond as a family and a society and we should start with the home because yes. home if the parents are not very communicative with their children or their daughter or the daughter feels that you know uh, she does she is not clear about uh, how she will be treated by the parents if the husband leaves her so that kind of uh, insecurity should not be there and the parents even when they marry off their daughter should tell them very specifically that any time anything happens we are there for you and our house is open for you so you don't worry so in that case you know that communication channel is there but often yes. this is not done and uh, women suffer uh, violence and uh, injustice for a very long time because they can't uh, uh, until the time they can't put up with it and then that is the time they disclose and by that time they have really suffered a uh, lot of trauma and uh, you know suffered uh, that situation uh, without any reason they could have been yes. got exactly ma'am and there is this sense of financial insecurity also which a woman feels at time that where will she go if she takes a decision of stepping out from the house so where will she go so is there uh, do we have some shelter homes or hostels also for such women who take a step uh, to move out from their house and you know take this firm decision so we uh, there are shelter homes in the state if i can talk about punjab so we have uh, uh, shelter homes which are run by ngos and there are government shelter homes also So in Jalandhar there are three shelter homes, and there are government of India aided shelter homes called Swadhar, but the capacity is limited. So yes, we would have a capacity of about you know 150 odd inmates in Jalandhar in the three shelter homes, and then there are shelter homes in Amritsar and Ludhiana also. But beyond that, you know, the capacity is very limited. But there are one-stop centers have been set up now. So okay. One stop centers have come up recently in every district, and 19 of them have already got out of 22. 19 have already got uh, you know their buildings and staff in place. So in case of an emergency for a short stay of up to five days, they can stay report to the uh, one stop centers, which are uh, situated in close proximity to the civil hospitals of the district. So they are district right. level uh, help. So, uh, if uh, immediate shelter is not required, other help is required. Then we have, uh, you know, women help desk in every police station in the state now, and right. it's functioning for almost a year. That's really nice, ma'am. And uh, we have seen that uh, women they are so emotional, and when something like this happens, there is the trauma which goes on throughout for a long time with them. so is it that the domestic violence it causes the uh, post traumatic stress disorders also in women yes it has been noted that women uh, suffer from anxiety and panic and this kind of post traumatic stress disorder where they may need where they may need psychiatric support as well and psych counseling right. so that uh, they can get out of this situation because you know women suffer for kind of uh, you know abuse neglect over a long period of time because of various reasons it may be yes. economic insecurity or it may be because even in uh, you know good uh, homes where husband and wife are very far well to do 
but their finances may be so integrated that it may be difficult for the woman to move out of the situation because she also stands to lose very financially uh, to financially right. she needs to move out so that is why even in uh, you know educated women it is very important to keep your uh, have a financial sense yes. right at the beginning of the marriage and keep your finances separate, separate as far as possible right absolutely man that gives us strength that gives us like <laughs> that advice yeah definitely ma'am it's a very uh, useful advice uh, there is uh, this personal um, query which has come up so we'll definitely share it a little later after coming up with all these questions and uh, ma'am like we talked about the uh, traumatic the trauma that a woman goes through so these counseling helplines they also support the women in that matter as well the counselors are there to support her yes the one stop centers have uh, great counselors they have been uh, they are funded by the state, uh, state government and right. uh, we have a link our 181 helpline has a linkage with them so but just to inform you sometimes there are issues pertaining to the one stop centers have come up recently and the, they are under the uh, department of women and child uh, safety and uh, okay. our department helpline is separate but so there are issues regarding coordination at times but over a period of time i am sure that you know we will have a better integration and uh, at least if the woman can now if you listening to this talk a woman can tell the one eight one that you know please refer me to the one stop center Right. So, then, so it is a kind of an education for everybody to learn by experience and uh, you know give better service uh, with every passing day. Yes, absolutely, ma'am. That's very right. And ma'am, we have a very uh, strong act, the Domestic Violence Act, two thousand five. So I want you to elaborate and you know tell in detail about that act because many of us don't know our rights. We don't know what like you talked about the dimensions of uh, domestic violence. We are many of us are not aware about that. We are not aware of uh, our rights as well. So I would like you to just elaborate a little about that so that we can you know be aware of all these things as well. So the Domestic Violence Act, as you said, uh, was enacted in two thousand five. and it was the result of uh, you know a uh, feminist movement for having an act for the better protection of rights of women before that we had uh, you know the criminal side of it we have 498 in the indian penal code which deals with uh, the definition talks about cruelty whether it is physical or emotional or mental cruelty so in case somebody can uh, prove that it is you know mental and physical cruelty has happened it can uh, has happened it can be taken in the domain of uh, 498 a but right. criminal action is mostly the last resort in a domestic situation and therefore if there are other issues where uh, you know person does not want to take criminal action and criminal action uh, will take time or it will lead to bitter bitterness in the within the family situation so the domestic violence act was enacted to uh, leave the actually principally have uh, you know the courts adjudicate upon a matrimonial dispute so it is basically uh, an act where the uh, courts have the powers to take application but okay. there are uh, there are uh, responsibilities assigned in the act to the police officers to the protection officers who are designated and defined and the uh, service agencies in the state so there are duties uh, uh, you know imposed upon them like a police officer will have a duty that if the lady comes to uh, the police officer the police officer is uh, supposed to guide her as per the provisions of the domestic violence act right. and in domestic violence act if you go to the court so basically it is going to be court proceedings in the under the domestic violence act and not arrest of the husband as many of okay. the guys the you know where uh, sometimes it is the law is misused also so it is not that every time the woman is right sometimes uh, there are men who are yes uh, exactly 
and so in that case uh, it was felt by all these eminent women who drafted this law uh, a national commission for women was uh, you know involved in its drafting and indra jay singh the supreme court lawyer uh, was also at the forefront along with other uh, ngo activists who were uh, you know who were very clear that uh, it is uh, an act where the police should not have the powers to arrest so it was well, one was that thing and the other was that the courts like you can you have the right to residence yes if you are the you are being thrown out of the house then you can ask for uh, you can file an application for right of residence in the matrimonial house you can ask for uh, some compensation you can ask for uh, you know financial uh, some financial order giving you financial security so those kind of orders which will give you the right to you know uh, stay in the house be comfortable or the custody of the children can also be given under the act and there are timelines for the judges to deal with the cases but unfortunately those timelines i have seen that over a period of time it has not those are not adhered to like there is a timeline of 3 days for uh, the court to take a decision on a right to residence i have not lately read it but maybe it is amended but the thing is that uh, you know our courts move a little slow yeah then so one should not get the impression that if today i go to the court so immediately i will get reports that will take time that is why these kind of interactions are important where uh, you know you get some kind of uh, you know, indication of how to go about your job yeah exactly and i personally feel ma'am if one is staying at a place and bearing all these things for so many years then at least you can you just move out and bear a little with the you know court and proceedings for a few more years and you can you know get out of it and that is i think a better option a than right staying you can have a right to residence and with an order that the husband will not transgress upon your personal space yeah the protection is very important and that has been given through that act yes absolutely ma'am so ma'am you can get it to the uh, to moving the court but that thing is to be clarified that many people don't know that domestic violence act uh, does not lead to an arrest it leads yeah. to this other thing but uh, you know you can't put somebody behind the bars under the domestic violence of course right ma'am that was a very valid point to you know share with the audience and ma'am in case a woman suffers domestic violence so what evidence will be useful in proving domestic violence in proceedings in the court of law so often it happens that domestic violence is not a one day affair yeah. sometimes sometimes a woman puts up with it on a continuous basis on multiple times before she decides to report so if she uh, you know she has decided that she wants to take some action or even if you know there is uh, she gets an injury so it's always good to have an intervention so if you can put in a application to the police even if uh, you don't want a criminal action but the police in such cases first counsels so often people think that how can we go to the police the police yes ma'am the relationship but in an abusive situation sometimes a little bit of intervention and a little bit of fear of the police can get people on track and so these days we have uh, you know we try to counsel uh, the families and the person who is abusive and the women help desks are there where women are there and women can safely go to them and uh, you know they we have uh, lots of uh, young police women who have been recruited to sub inspector and they are uh, you know having good education they are very sensitive to the concerns of uh, women and uh, then they try to counsel the people and get them back on track so if that is not there uh, if one doesn't want to go to the police station then one can go to the one stop centers as i told you which is only at the district level but the police station the advantage of police station is that it is at the uh, you know the nearest to the home 
but uh, if somebody is staying in a remote uh, you know place in a, in a subdivision or a police station which is far away from the di- from the district headquarters so right. then that would be a problem to go to one stop centers on a you know, continuous basis but uh, i think that what the important thing is that wherever we have such situation the society should reach out and wherever uh, women require help we may reach out to the local police station or to the uh, one stop center right so one should not feel these days like we have educated police women there uh, for the help of uh, others so one should not feel apprehensive approaching the police stations yeah yeah no no we have named them punjab police mahila mitra so they are supposed to be women friends friends so, yeah so we are uh, they have they are trained extensively we uh, you know give them lot of exposure in uh, seminars uh, conducted by un and by the women and child department so to bring about sensitivity in the policing in such cases in domestic violence especially and we were talking about the evidence so the evidence is that uh, when you go to a police station or anywhere you, if you have an application you sh- and whatever action was taken on it so it is uh, some if you have some evidence of uh, you know injury so an mlr is uh, very important so medical legal report so sometimes okay. people have injuries women get injuries but they don't uh, get the mlr done the yeah, medical that medical legal report let us say the violence is repeated then it becomes evidence that uh, you know second time also if an mlr can be taken so those two mlr will be evidence that the uh, so this kind of abuse has been happening in a systematic manner so which is which will if you don't have that and you just have some kind of uh, razi nama which is mostly written in police stations so we try to uh, train our police officers well but a woman should insist that if the husband had beaten her it should reflect in the compromise deed that he was uh, beaten up and now he has apologized for beating me slapping me okay. or for pushing me or you know by because uh, inflicting injury upon me because of which an mlr was lodged but i don't want to take any action on it for the time being so these kind of things uh, which are in the writing uh, are very important uh, when it comes uh, for getting evidence and often women uh, you know suffer a very uh, brutal kind of violence at times where mm-hmm. you know, they get, uh, medical help and stitches and all those things but they never report to the so when later on when they uh, decide to separate or uh, take some action at that time then they don't have any money. yeah that's true so that is very important to have an mlr is uh, something which is very very important so ma'am once it is proved then what are the penalties which are associated with the domestic violence convictions so convictions are uh, like it can uh, be for a few years behind the bars but uh, okay. what my uh, experience has shown that uh, you know the uh, judicial proceedings if one goes into them are so prolonged that people uh, you know get into out of court settlements so right right it's very rare that you have a conviction in the 298 eit so it is uh, difficult but uh, unless the thing goes beyond the point then is uh, a crime which cannot be ignored otherwise yes. in cases uh, you know even if penalties are there but uh, they don't go to the logical conclusion so sometimes the court cases are very long and then a women especially the women from uh, you know under privileged section of society do not have the resources to pursue those cases. exactly very true so the um, the airlines the these the ngos becomes very important that's very important 
Absolutely, ma'am. And we have a question from the audience where uh, Sarita is asking that uh, during the case hearing, if a couple separates, if they're living separately, then is the wife liable for alimony or is it after the divorce that it is being finalized? No, no, she is. Uh, the, she can get maintenance at any time, even if she is living separately. So she can apply under the Domestic Violence Act. She can apply. As I told you, that but that is one of the remedies that right. uh, she can get maintenance. At. Okay, that's when great, ma'am. So actually, ma'am, basically the thing is that there are so many laws and so many uh, uh, things which are available for the women, but they are unaware of all these things that they have this, you know, right for them, and they right for the residential, uh, as you have just told us, and uh, right for the maintenance, and so many other things are there, and one just sits behind and you know keeps struggling throughout, and doesn't approach anyone, doesn't approach the police, and doesn't move out from that scenario like to stress that that one should try to get out of one's inhibitions and you know, reporting uh, bad behavior so even if uh, you don't go in for a you know go in for uh, an, uh, an application in, under the domestic violence act or at least tell your parents at the earliest so even if yes. one snap should be like not tolerated and abuse of any kind where you feel uh, you know stifled or you feel suffocated in a relationship you should open out with your friends family and uh, try to get, get help before it becomes so bad that you know you end up in a, like as you were saying as a post traumatic yeah. stress disorder and uh, requiring medical help so it is best best to get out of a bad relationship early on Exactly, ma'am. Absolutely right, ma'am. Uh, is there anything, ma'am, that we, you would like to suggest to the women to empower themselves against uh, domestic violence? So, uh, I would say that all the women, and especially the parents, who you know educate their daughters and make them financially independent, they should also teach them, you know, their rights. And like I told you, that we should tell them that. In case they are in a problem, they have, uh, you know, they are willing to support them. And that yes. communication between the parents and the daughters is very important. Even now, some parents think that, uh, you know, it's uh, okay to educate, but then the principal uh, goal in life is to get the girl married. And once the marriage happens, then, uh, you know, that is the, she has to suffer and adjust and all that. Yeah. So yes, uh, I mean adjustment is required in any relationship and so is true uh, for marriage. But then we should, uh, we should be aware of what is the difference between mere adjustment and uh, you know uh, suffering the injustice. Absolutely. So we that fine uh, distinction and uh, and the parents have a very important role actually. So to the women themselves, I would say that, uh, you know, don't get into women are sometimes young uh, girls are not very, uh, uh, not counseled properly about, you know, life and its implications. And uh, they are in that age, which is quite understandable when beauty matters and the cosmetic beauty and you know, flirting and having a relationship with friends and being popular is very important. But I would say that, uh, you know, it is most important to be financially independent for a woman. Absolutely. And uh, you may or may not marry. So it doesn't really matter if you're not married. But it does matter if you're not financially independent. Financially. Yeah, so you should be girls should try to be financially independent and then they should learn to speak up for themselves. And I would also like to add again, I am speaking to the parents again that the parents should encourage their daughters to speak up. But uh, like the society being as it is, uh, the kind of Indian society and even the Punjabi society which we have inherited as women, we find that women are not allowed to speak much and uh, so they are not used to speaking up. Yes. So whenever there is any wrong thing happening, they may think it is wrong, but they will be told that it is wrong. Yeah. That, uh, that is called a conspiracy of sadness. 
so right. women should not uh, you know get overawed by men in their life lives if they are you know not uh, you know advising them properly so you should have your own head on your shoulders and make your own decision you may sometimes go wrong but then most of the time uh, you, know, you should uh, you should uh, but also at the same time don't never think that i am right all the time so it's yeah. a very delicate balance so a lot of wisdom is required for that but uh, it will uh, we need to uh, you know go through the process and be wise enough to make our decisions about absolutely ma'am well said and that was such a nice suggestion and you know very apt <clears throat> very apt thing that you have just said that finances are so important and have head on your you know use your brains don't rely upon others always for the decisions and in the end I, yes ma'am and speak out <laughs> and speak out exactly that's true ma'am and there's a quote which i would like to share with everyone it's been christine mason miller that at any given moment you have the power to say this is not how the story is going to end summing up with that only ma'am that you just said speak out so the story is not going to end that way speak out so anybody who is suffering or if you are seeing anyone else suffering going through uh, all this trauma all the uh, violence please voice out please stand for them speak for them and thank you so much gurpreet ma'am you have spared time with us you have given our pres uh, your precious time to us and you have taught us so many things which we were unaware of you have told us so many you know good things which a woman should always apply in her life so thank you so much gurpreet ma'am it's really a pleasure to have you and we are really indebted to you for sharing all this knowledge your experiences with us thank you so much shweta it was a pleasure being with all of you and i wish and hope that you all will uh, progress well in life and be confident women whom everybody will look up thank you so much thank you so much ma'am and thank you so to our lovely audience for being there with us throughout thank you everyone stay safe keep smiling see you again